This video is a demonstration of techniques that can be used to intubate patients with a suspected COVID-19 infection. It's been produced by my friend, Dr. Lucas Kandler, who's a consultant anesthesiologist in Zurich. Hi, everybody. We are from the Institute of Anesthesiology at the University of Zurich. My name is Vanessa Moll. I'm an attending here. Larissa is a resident and Manila is an anesthesia assistant. We are here today to introduce our airway management concept for COVID-19 positive patients at our university hospital. Our concept is divided in three phases. We have the planning phase, intubation, and extubation, as well as post-operative care. All these phases are equally important. First, we have the planning, and as you can see, we are all uh, donned in protective gear, which is according to your local SOPs. We did our body check, and we deemed each other appropriate um, for this procedure. For induction, we have our medications on the tray, as well as our airway materials, including a, an endotracheal tube with a stylet in place, as well as our video laryngoscope. Next to the induction table, we have our dirty tray for uh, dirty materials to be disposed there. It's also important to have uh, a trash bin next to the patient so you can drop dirty articles right into the trash bin. Outside we have Tim, who is our clean person and jumper in case we need medications or airway material, he will um, be able to hand them to us. We designated our roles clearly with Larissa being the medication person and airway help, Manila doing the documentation, Tim um, outside as a clean person and myself as a seasoned anesthesiologist uh, doing the airway. We are starting with an adequate pre-oxygenation for about three to five minutes. You, as you can see, our patient is wearing a surgical face mask, which of course we have to take off. Then we will pre-oxygenate and here it's important to have a tight fitting mask to avoid any leakage. After a thorough pre-oxygenation, we are starting our rapid sequence induction. RSI is used to avoid backmasking the patient for prevention of aerosolization. Here, avoiding coughing with a thorough relaxation is also of utmost importance. We induce the patient and our patient is paralyzed. We are now intubating the patient with a video laryngoscope. We are utilizing an endotracheal tube with a stylet in place. The endotracheal tube now is in place. The stylet can go. Thank you. It's important to inflate the cuff before ventilating the patient. If a patient is desaturating and you have to back mask the patient, it is very important to use both hands to back mask the patient to have a tight seal and have a second person, Larissa in this case, to back mask your patient. If the back masking is not successful, it is important to then reach out to the person outside the room and gather other aids for example, uh, LMA. If you have to escalate to a fiber optic scope, please use a single use fiber scope. Intraoperatively, we are utilizing lung protective ventilation strategies, i.e. a tidal volume of four to six cc's per kilogram ideal body weight and a PEEP. If you're transporting an intubated patient to the ICU, make sure that you clamp the endotracheal tube in inspiration before you disconnect and reconnect to your back valve mask. 
we are saving our transport ventilators for use in the ICU. And hence, currently, we are utilizing back valve masking for transportation of ICU patients. It is important to avoid coughing when you extubate the patient. Here, IV lidocaine or remifentanil come in handy. When you extubate, you're not utilizing positive pressure, but rather you're deflating the cuff and pulling the tube. We dispose of the tube right away and oxygenate the patient with a, a tight-fitting mask. Once the patient is adequately breathing, we are utilizing nasal prongs for transport. After the nasal prongs are on the patient, the patient will also receive a surgical face mask. After successful extubation, it's important to doff your personal protective equipment according to your local uh, standard operational procedures. Again, a body check is important. We also recommend debriefings after intubation and extubation to further optimize your procedure. Hopefully you enjoyed our short video. Be safe and stay healthy out there. Good luck.